There's been a recent study that said that if you have low EQ, you can expect to earn about $29,000 less per year than your high EQ counterparts. That's a lot. Yeah, That's it a really adds amount. up. Wow. So 29,000, I guess in the statistic I mentioned earlier, 90% of top performers have a high EQ, which I guess means maybe the 10% that don't. Right. <laughs> you don't have top performers. Exactly. How does it affect you in, in a uh, relationship? Outside a personal relationship. Well, in a relationship, if you have a high measure of EQ, you're going to be able to be much more empathic to your partner. And mm -hmm. that means that you're going to be able to not only see things through their perspective, but in addition, I like to think of empathy as including the ability to be able to create space for your partner to basically see the world as they are, not the way that you think that they should be seeing. So it takes away a preconceived judgment and it instead empowers your partner to be who they are without you trying to change them. So do you think right now society, uh, actually I keep bringing this up in some of the shows, you're probably getting tired of hearing it, but <laughs> a lot of TV shows tend to guide us, especially when we're younger, in the early 20s, late teens, of how to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And one of my pet peeves is that a lot of times you'll show, you'll see somebody having an argument and then they just walk out and nothing's ever settled, Right. a big event happens, and then they're back together again. You know, it takes this and doesn't seem to be... You yeah, know, the sitcom mentality to life, yes. basically. And I don't want that kind of resolutions <laughs> on my conflict. Um, so what are some of the negatives that you would see in a relationship? Do you see people having misunderstandings? Is there a lack of communication? Absolutely, and you definitely get the tendency for one of the partners that has the more low-key um, low EQ uh, measure would then be less likely to take accountability for themselves. So they're going to be the kind of partner who says that, well, if only she or he would do X, Y, or Z different, then I would have a different experience. So they pass the buck of accountability. They pass the buck. <laughs> now you, you know, we talked a little earlier and you were mentioning some characteristics of low EQ people. Mm -hmm. um, can you go over that a little bit? Absolutely. So one of the main things that distinguishes somebody as having low EQ is that they will have that tendency, like I said, about blaming other people and not taking their own accountability. The other big sort of red flag to let you know that someone you're dealing with has low EQ is their inability to receive any sort of critical feedback because it's either their way or the highway. So they don't really want to hear that anything they're doing is less than perfect. Do you think that's pretty prevalent? Those two seem really strong. There seems to be a strong connection between those first two. Yes, I do. I think that there is kind of that correlation between the two of them. And then that sort of sets up also the person to not really be open to hearing anyone else's opinions or feedback. So it, it gets them in this really kind of isolated sort of bubble mentality of that they don't have any room for anyone else's information.